At just 15, Lee Maynard had found her life's passion, to create future leaders in South Africa. She left school early, matriculated on her own at just 16, and went off to university to study a degree in leadership. When I was 19, I was in my final year of university and we had to do an internship. And I got an opportunity to intern with a, a very big and important man in the world. And he asked me one but very powerful question. He said to me, what is your big yes? And he looked and he waited for the answer. I went and I thought about my answer and at the end of my month-long internship with him, I, I said, you know, I actually do have an answer for your question. And my big yes would be to start a, a school one day, a, a cool school, the kind of school that, that brings out the best in people, where, where young people want to come to school every day, where, where the teachers want to come to school every day, where all that energy and idealism of youth is, is, is really allowed to, to fly. When she left university, Lee entered the corporate world and became a project manager. The work was secure, the pay was good, and she was a valued member of her team. An alluring, secure future in the mainstream lay ahead of her. And my worries, I started to become, well, should I take one overseas holiday or should I take two this year, you know? And I, I caught myself, I remember having those thoughts and just thinking, whoa, you've, you've gone off track. You've, you've lost the plot. This, this isn't real, and you know it's not real. This, these kinds of concerns are not real concerns. Why are they not real concerns? Because it's not the way the majority of people live. In all areas of my life, I've tried to seek freedom and diversity and perspectives, and anything that closes us off or limits us to one world view has never been for me for long. So you took a leap of faith. I bumped into my mentor from when I was 19 and he said to me, hey, you know what you're doing? And I said, you know what? I don't know. I've resigned um, and I know that I want to, I know that there are new ways of working and hence new ways of educating out there, but I don't have a background in education. I don't know where to go. And he said, you must go and meet a man called Taddy Bletcher. He started a university in Joburg and I was like, you can start a university. I, I was thinking of starting a school, but gosh, if, if, if someone started a university, I definitely want to meet them. I went to Joburg and I learned everything that I could learn, and, and then it was time to come back. And I still, to be honest, didn't know how I was going to do this. And in those moments where things aren't quite coming together, you feel foolish. I felt foolish. My life thus far has taught me a few things. And one thing I know is that there is wisdom in, in the unknown and in those moments of change. So I knew I just had to sit it out. I knew I actually had to go within and listen and, and, and wait. For the, for the next unfolding. It, it was difficult, but I, I knew that it was waiting with a purpose. And so the pieces of the puzzle slowly started coming together. Lee crossed paths with three like-minded souls, Gia Whitehead, Audrey Marais, and Graham Lashbrook. And together they crafted a vision and built a school, Tsiba, a not-for-profit incubator of excellence. And I remember going to my English class of dictionary and looking at what does it mean to, to jump or to leap and it means to uku tsiba. I remember coming to my colleagues and saying, how about this name tsiba? And we thought about it and we tossed it around and then we realised it could be an acronym for the Tertiary School in Business Administration, TSIBA. So welcome to Quiet Time today, looking inside of us to see the last assignment that you did. The way I normally would Tiba opened its doors to students who otherwise would not have been able to enroll at university um, because of possibly finances or possibly they didn't have 
university entrance um, qualifications. Many of the students who came, came from schools, for example, that only had standard or lower grade subjects offered. So it wasn't through their own doing that they, they couldn't get to university. It's not going to be perfect, but if excellent, it's the word that exists, it must be seen in this work. The first year of being operational was just glorious. I mean, we were 80 people, it was still quite small, and, and we flew. They were well on their way to creating a dream, graduating entrepreneurial students and leaders. But with all new ventures, challenges come with the territory. From its inception, SIBA offered their students an interim accredited degree, affiliated to another institution. Then they got word that things would have to change. At the beginning of the second year, we got a letter from the Department of Education saying, choose. If you offer the accredited degree of another institution, you're effectively that institution. Or you need to write your own degree and be your own institution. The plan was to then write our own degree in record speed while our students did UNISA. That added an additional year onto their studies, an additional year that they would not be working. They had to go back to their families, most importantly, and say, guys, you know this university I said I was going to study at that you'd never heard of? Well, now there's been this glitch and it's going to take a longer year. I mean, how do you explain that to your families? Your families say, they're ripping you off. Leave now, quickly. You can just imagine um, the, the huge respect people had in the community that you're at university and now suddenly you're not at university anymore. And how do you explain this, you know? How do you explain to your family that warned you that maybe you should check it out? I had been elected to, to, to take the, the, the position of, of, of leadership and ultimate responsibility. And I had to, the age of, I think, 26 at that time, find, find our way through. I witnessed Lee and other members of staff, but Lee particularly, I remember, losing a lot of weight. So the four directors, they were working around the clock, designing the degree, teaching, listening to the students, engaging with government, engaging with educationalists, getting teams going. There was a lot of sacrifices made for this vision. It was immensely, immensely challenging to, to, to take the organization from a real, real low point where students were leaving because they, they'd been messed around and they didn't know whether they could believe us anymore and trust us and turn that situation around into one where we had accreditation for our own degree and our students felt positive about the place. There was not a single moment that Lee ever envisaged giving up the vision. It's the only degree in the country that has leadership at an undergraduate level, for example. We wrote this fabulous degree and, and we did get it uh, accredited in record time and when we did, we went back to the students and we said, here's our fabulous degree and this is why it's so fabulous. You can choose to shift over to this degree and get course credits for what you've done, or you can stay with UNISA. We, we realize this has been a wobble for you, so you can choose. At the end, 95% of our students did choose to move across to our degree. Valentino. Dashti. Lucinda. Patrick Paul. When I went to the graduation ceremony at SIBA was when I finally got it. She never gave up and she would never give in. She knew all along what was right. <laughs> 